sacks of mostly water this is this week i'm learning the podcast where the sacks are hairy and the topics can get scary this is season two episode <laughs> four what? 34 overall uh what recorded february did, 16th what the, no what God the fuck it. did you just say what the you are not you allowed say? to write your own intros anymore <laughs> hilarious God, I'm, I'm gonna write your intros oh my god god my my sabotaging of your intros is better than that god no no that is Apolo- what we are we are apologize. Sex no. mostly water uh, yes no, Apolo- okay, no, sure. no. Yeah, yeah apologize I'm not apologizing for anything. No. <laughs> Apologize now. <laughs> Apologize uh, to our nine viewers. For what? And our seven listeners. There, that is a classic reference from a Star Trek Next Generation episode. Is it? it it's not. It's not the it first is. part. It's yeah, not it's the not first part, part I'm part. asking you to yep. apologize for. <laughs> yeah. It's the second part. <laughs> we are all sacks of mostly water, and all of us are hairy. Oh my God, Brandon! I love it. More stubbly. That was, <laughs> I, that was I hate incredible. You, I hate you and everyone that looks like you except for you, Arvina. <laughs> I like you. Ah. <laughs> uh, All right. Fine. Yeah. So love it. that's the way this is going to start. Fine. That's the way this is going <laughs> to start. Some good news. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, I need a drink for this. God. So, this is Season 2, Episode 4, Number 34, overall, recorded February 16th, 2021. I am your host, Brandon Vader, also known as Dracanis. Next to me, the ever-grumpy Charlie Mueller. Charlie Stifler, also known as Mueller. You almost made my middle name. I'm good with that. And I'm not always grumpy. You're just always terrible. Oh. This has gone through. That would hurt if I had a heart. Sharks. Shards fired. God damn it. Hey, hey, I just want to remind you guys that that with Valentine's Day just having happened, that the fastest way to a man's heart is the midclavicular line, fifth intercostal space. Words to live by. That's a that's a free twill love tip, ladies. Yeah. Or gentlemen, you know it's twenty twenty one. Yeah. To each their own, yes. <laughs> Who else is here? I'm sorry. Yep. <laughs> Down below, Cody Stratman, also known as Psychonitrus. And then Caddy Corner, Colton Roper, also known as Seeker4761. I, I don't even have anything funny to say. I, <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> How many times Drac is going to make us all go... Uh, oh, gosh. That's how many cringes He's... I am going to have this series he's learning <laughs> it's not gonna be a high enough number for long colton <laughs> the series will have to end oh fuck it'll be your fault brandon that's how we'll determine when new seasons are done is when we hit that Stop number it. our cringe yeah. our cringe limit like yep. all right hey <laughs> by the way i still have the top most liked comment from that episode where we debated seasons I commented my opinion, and everyone that that liked it makes me the top comment. I would just like to say that the fans are with me. And if you look at the video, I'm the only one that has ever commented, and the only person that liked it. I was going to say, like, (laughs) I look at the comments, and I'm pretty sure that was the only one. (laughs) What? I might have to go back and comment just to find that one. Yeah, he does have the most hard data. data is hard data. I am undefeated at WWF. Sumo wrestling. Yep. Undefeated. Never been defeated at that. All true. All twill facts. Yep. Cannot. I'm defeated at breakdance off. Uh, yeah. I mean. Wow. Except that one time. <laughs> wow. Hey, hey. What happens with tequila stays Unknown to time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we should have a lot of fun today. Uh, Cody is going to tell us why an online retailer was suing the FAA. Ooh, mm-hmm. interesting. And Colton is going to tell us that we are in the 
I don't know why this is underlined in bold, so I kind of want to spell it, but I'm not sure. C-U-S-P or cusp of capturing the fastest thing. The cusp. It's italics, cusp. bolded, underlined, all caps. Yeah, it's like everything you can do to letters. Theoretically, it was supposed to tell you to be like silly with it, so it worked out. I'm okay with that. <laughs> and Charlie is going to inform us about respect, beneficence, and justice. I was hoping you were going to say that word wrong. You actually said I... close, close to right. Not perfect, but very close to right. Beneficence. Yeah. Ah, fuck, you're right. That is the right. You're close. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that, too. And, and Brandon is going to tell us what, about an AI with an affective disorder. Did you, did you somehow create an AI using your own personality? No. Oh. They're gonna be sniping this, at each this other is all more an same. AI that judges your affect. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna judge an affect, I'll just go ahead and judge me with that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so Cody, take us show. away. I like how the word oh, cusp God. just got bigger. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that distracted me. And it's still yes. distracting well, me as I'm trying to look at my notes here. <laughs> Mission accomplished. So there's this online realtor, not realtor, um, retailer. Those are different things, kind of. It's very different. Uh, I wouldn't buy real estate online. Probably not a great <laughs> idea. Just maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Um uh, called Race Day Quads, and it's a company that actually I buy a lot of stuff through uh, for my drones. And they're awesome because they've got like two day shipping to Alaska, and they actually do it. Surprisingly, um, they still won't ship batteries here. Stupid, but anyway, they were, and I think still might be suing the FAA, and the reason for that is because the FAA, back in December 2019, proposed new rules on drones. One of those major rules was the requirement for remote ID. And in its original description, it required the drone to be able to broadcast remote ID over a network at all times now like cell phone network or like just had to have network access so yeah either cell phone or i guess if you had you know internet close by through some other means you know wi-fi connected drones i it'd probably have to be cel cellular though uh i'll actually clarify something so in the ham radio network there's something called aprs which is uh let me make this as simple as possible. It is ham radio, release. ham radio based internet positioning. So it interface. So there's a receiver that is hooked up to the internet and will ping sites or stations and relay their coordinates to the, a moving map on the internet. Hmm. Yeah. No, oh, that's semi fleets cool. use that used to use that quite a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. But sorry, continue. No, no, that that's actually poignant to this fact. So after having comments, they have since removed that requirement. So it still needs to broadcast remote ID. Uh, they've actually added part of this. Uh, another reason I like how Cusp just got smaller now. Uh, another reason <laughs> that they've, or another thing that they had to change is rather than requiring the drone to be manufactured with remote ID, which means anybody who DYIs your own drones, you couldn't do that because you would have to have the drone pre-assembled with remote ID. So now they have added remote ID modules. So you can actually add that as a module to your drone. So that's actually 
made it better too. Um, the other thing uh, that they've actually changed some things for the better too. So now under part 107, and part 107 is kind of like the commercial drone license. It's where if you want to make money using your drone, there's actually some people on YouTube that have gotten hit because of viewers narking on them saying like, hey, you're, you know, flying your drone, uh, Kara and Nate. They had apparently people with nothing better to do than to narc on them about A, flying a drone or making video in national parks. And this is why another reason national parks suck, too many rules. And B, um, flying a drone without a part 107. Uh, so you have to have that in order to, when you make any sort of money with your drone, also if you want to fly a drone over 55 pounds, which is pretty heavy. That's huge. Yeah. So say that's, that's a huge that's like drone. a news drone. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. If you want to like. That's like a small UCAV. Yep. So if you want to fly like a full motion picture rig around or bigger, that would be that. Now, there are drones that actually, so there's this middle area where you have to technically register your drone, and which is like a five minute process and costs like five bucks, super easy to do. And that's 250 grams to that 55 pound mark. Uh, th and that's what I'm in. So I actually have paperwork for my drone that it's registered. There's actually a smaller portion and this is why the Mavic Mini is 249 grams, because it does not require any sort of registration. Yep. Hmm. But, so what Love I was it. getting at is under the new Part 107 guidelines, <coughs> or regulations, or rules, or whatever you, rubric, whatever you want to call it, they're actually allowing if you have illumination on your drone to be able to legally fly at night and to fly over people, which is huge. As long That's as those... That's a big deal. What yeah. type of illumination? Now, uh, I was hoping you weren't going to ask me for specifics on that <laughs> because I Like, are don't... we talking, like, airplanes where you just have a... a is it red and green? I don't know, whatever their rules red are with the, yes. on the wings. Yeah. Is it the same kind of rule there? Or is it just like you have to have illumination from the ground to the drone? So you always know where it's at? So I believe it's on the drone and it has to be visible from some distance away. I, I forget what hmm. that distance is, but it, it has to be visible from a certain distance. I don't know if it's you have to know which direction the drone is flying which would mean you would have to have the red and green. The problem with drones is they can fly, they've got six degrees of freedom. So unlike a fixed wing aircraft that can go like this or this, you know, they, they can't, they can, they've got pitch, they've got yaw, they've got roll. They cannot, however, change their, you know, forward axis they are either going forward or they are not where drones unless you've got like an f-22 or something that's doing these weird rules <laughs> yeah but for drones equivalent you can go equivalent vehicles this way you can go this way and you can actually go backwards too so you've got much more freedom of movement so i don't even know if you could have illumination on that unless that illumination changed as the drone was moving and i do not remember reading any part of that so i would assume that it is just illumination from a certain distance away hmm. not red and green on either side because the whole point of red and green is so you know if something is coming towards you or going away from you it's the same thing in boats right So a anyway, this this company was suing them. I, I don't know if they've dropped the lawsuit at this point or if they are still uh, doing that. I, I know most of their conditions were kind of met on this. There, there might be a few minor things, but it's pretty much t the FAA changing these aspects of this remote ID regulation 
has made it so this company won't instantly go out of business and actually this whole hobbyist industry won't instantly go out of business because you won't be able to you know build your own drone this is like not being able to build your own computer in a way uh the, another way that you can fly your drone without remote id is there are these areas that uh let me see here so there's these faa approved areas that you can actually fly your drone in that are remote id exempt uh yeah in specific uh, faa recognized identification areas is what this says hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, that, yeah that's all okay. i got this week I, I, okay so i i really haven't poo-pooed any of your drone stuff at all and i i'm not going to but there is there is a balance that needs to be struck and i i i know you're not completely for deregulation of all things drone but you don't like the amount of regulation you've got. Yeah, because there have been incidents like, for instance, at Gatwick. Uh, it, was, right. it was 2019 where drones stopped like all flights in and out of Gatwick for like hours. A, yeah, a significant amount of time. So yeah. th this is... And the other thing, uh, the, the situation I was going to specifically bring up is um, anytime that there's a forest fire or a wildland fire and they are trying to use air support to help knock down the flames. Mm. If anybody hears or sees a drone, they call a mayday and stop all air activity. So that's putting structures, property, people and firefighters at risk because someone's trying to get a really cool shot of a forest fire with a drone. And you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to, that is actually part of drone operation is you're not supposed to use drones anywhere where there's an emergency right. and anywhere where you can inhibit emergency vehicles with the key exemption of if you are actually a professional rescuer yeah. you yes. can utilize a drone to assist in the emergency it's it's where these people think that they're helping and trying to ooh, i'm gonna go scout and see if i can help these guys instead of hey can i help you guys which are two different things, completely. Now, there was an incident, actually, of... This is kind of interesting, and it has to do... A, a, an offshoot. Uh, so there were these hikers that were stranded, and they couldn't get a cell phone signal out. So what they did was they had their phone, and they texted. And then, since the phone couldn't get signal, they attached it to one of the guy's drones and just went up until the cell phone, <laughs> until the text message went out. And then, of course, you know, dr they knew it went out because they went back down and then said sent. Well, is that one of those situations where the guy with the drone was like, can I help? Instead of just helping arbitrarily. He, he was part of well, the emergency. Yeah, he was, oh, so, okay. Yeah, he was part yeah. of the situation. Yeah. So, yeah, it, yeah that, that was them rescuing themselves. Well, not rescuing themselves, but yeah. allowing themselves to be rescued by using a drone. So, yeah, I, I agree that that is an issue. Uh, again, it wouldn't be an issue if people... And I, and I think this is the problem with drones, is there's actually some... And, and this is before I really got into the drone thing, is there was a video that actually showed a guy fly a drone straight up, pretty much until the battery started to run low, and he was way up there. And like tens of thousands of feet or thousands of feet? Thousands of feet. And the drone actually crashed on the way down because it ran out of battery. And, like, in the comments, there were all sorts of pilots going, and this is why I hate people with drones. Like, this one video is why I hate people with drones. Because you wouldn't be able to see them and just fly right into them uh, that's how and the right. and that's, engines are that's meant a lot worse than a bird strike yeah the, a lot worse. the engines are meant to take bird strikes there because birds are flesh and light bone you know birds be grinded up in the engine. water they're not hairy though no <laughs> god damn it they're feathery 
<laughs> I hate you and everyone that looks like you except for Arvina. <laughs> Why do you hate my dad? Or my Principal. child? Principal. Oh. <laughs> so, a- anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just anyway. Sorry, Cody. Sorry. No, it's fine. Yeah, the engines are not meant to deal with carbon fiber intake. Like they're not meant to deal with all of that stuff. Plastics, or, polymers, and metals. Or you know, a mini explosion from the lithium polymer battery. Lipo. It just ate. So, yeah. <laughs> mm, oh, that was a spicy jalapeno. <laughs> yeah, not quite. So yeah, I get where you're coming from. So, well, I mean, if, yeah, these if people if people weren't being stupid as as you said, there wouldn't be really a need for yep. any of these particular you, regulations. You either need intelligence po- intelligent population or regulation. And one of the two is feasible, and one of <laughs> one of the other one is well, a dream. Have you seen the movie Idiocracy? Yeah. It, no, uh, but it's on my watch list. Yeah, because it, it shouldn't have been it. a documentary, and it, it turns out it was a documentary. I don't know. <laughs> See, I'm this. This is where like I have certain views that I know would be extremely unpopular about just going like, is this baby going to be one of those people that are <laughs> like, going to make one of those damn drone thinner? flyers that fly like, into this? All right, let's just this. 300 the baby off of the cliff. You, you know. yep. I was getting ready to say, this is Sparta! And, and <laughs> I, am, I am not a parent. Just to put that out there. Thank really. God for that. <laughs> because, well, I had a dumb baby and now it's gone. Oh, Jesus, oh. <laughs> that, oh. that took a turn. If we were monetized, we would have been demonetized right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Luckily we're not, so it's okay. All right, Damn. somebody else should probably go now after that. <laughs> For the love of yeah. God, Colton, go. Oh, God, I don't even know how to do with that. Let's talk about slow motion cameras. Is that is that a bit safer than spartaning a baby? You can watch I would it say a slow safer. motion. Yes, it is. The cliff. <laughs> God damn it, Cody. I love it. <laughs> Well, I'll just go into my my script. Uh, A popular feature in modern flagship smartphones has actually been their ability to capture video footage in slow motion. Uh, Apple and Samsung uh, smartphones can capture slow motion footage around 240 FPS, with the Samsung actually offering super slow-mo around 960 frames per second. So, wow. Basically, you can look at the popularity of slow motion footage by looking at the YouTube channel Slow Mo Guys. Have you guys ever... Like, oh, yeah. heard of that particular oh, channel? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're fascinating. Amazing. Yeah, fascinating channel. And obviously, a lot of the people in the world believe that as well, with over 14 million subscribers. Uh, they will particularly film around 1,000 FPS to much, much higher numbers. Uh, I think their last video was like 170,000 FPS with a, an ultrasonic obliter- obliterator. So, giant, giant numbers in that, in the, in that sense. And they actually have videos where they, they've shot even higher. And there are other YouTube yeah. channels I've seen where they're doing hundreds of, many hundreds of thousands of FPS with cool little things like that. That's what, uh, so Linus Tech Tips actually had a really cool video about different FPS monitors. And they used those high FPS cameras to determine if the monitor FPS actually help or the monitor not fps but refresh rate actually helped make you a better gamer and yeah the i think they found is, out it it yeah. does to an extent yeah. to an extent to an extent mm-hmm. yeah all the things being equal i think it, they determined it does make you a better and more so what you're saying is frames equipment. win games frames win games I lags can see that. lag sucks bag Lags mean death. Don't don't reference the opening line anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's uh, but one thing that the <laughs> slow-mo guys can't possibly capture at those speeds that they're actually doing is light itself, or more specifically, the movement of light. 
uh, enter a team of researchers from Caltech. Uh, they actually developed a camera technology where they, they could shoot camera footage not in the thousands of FPS the, or the millions or even the billions. Their latest CUSP camera, which stands for Compressed Ultra Fast Spectral uh, Photography, can capture up to 70 trillion frames per second with a T. What? With a T. I, I double checked that. That is with a T. Holy shit. That's yeah. almost so how they... much debt we have. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh. Uh, they, could, they do this by using a, a laser pulse that fires for one quadrillionth of a second, and there's really no way to really visualize that. So it's really, really small number. And then they use like special optics that break up that, that, uh, that laser pulse into even smaller like length laser pulses. So essentially they fire one laser with the highest speed laser they can do, and then they're able to split that up just using physics and actually can capture... I think four or five images from one laser pulse based on these cool little physics things. Splitting and all, all that kind of stuff. Hence my, my background, light splitting. So oh, not how they do it, Pink but Floyd. still interesting. Still cool. And honestly, it's, it's, it's a very cheeky way of doing it if you think about it. It's just, it's science. It's freaking cool as hell. So I would like you guys to actually look at a GIF I, I posted. Uh, Brandon and Charlie, you can actually check in the... On the Discord in production, you should be able to see the GIF. Uh, our recorder is going to have to check in the OneNote, and I think I it should be down there. You should be able to look at it, and we'll put it up here as well for our viewers. Da, 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 let me find it as well. I should have had it up, but Holy I am not a professional. Mother Mac. Wow. Right. So, what's kind of cool about this particular? This particular GIF is the one on the left is actually the the original uh, system, which is just compressed ultra fast photography, not with the S. Uh, as you can see, if you compare it to the right, it is a a leap forward in terms of capturing light. Uh, wow. Look at it, look at it at the FPS on the left. It it just looks like two or three frames compared to the one on the right. It's it's unbelievable. That is a single pulse of light moving across the screen, C captured in picoseconds. So, kind of cool. For reference, Jeez. the speed of light is around 300... Uh, the speed of light can actually travel about 300 billion millimeters per second. So, if you take the FPS of the CUSP system, which is at 70 trillion FPS, and divide that by 300 billion, you get about 233 frames for every millimeter the light travels. Uh, another way to think of that is essentially it's 233 frames per second, if you look at all the math. So, compared to the first one, it's... It's leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds better. So, wow. super cool, super cool. Uh, I'd like to thank Petapixel.com for explaining that math because we're talking about numbers that are just gigantic, and again, you can't really visualize it. But they they really did simplify it, and there will be a link in the YouTube description if, if you guys want to check it out as well. Huh. So I guess we'll conclude with why care at all. What what use does capturing events at these ungodly FPS even matter? Uh, basically, the one of the reasons they're thinking about using it is for short-lived events. So we're talking the moment nuclear fusion happens, which is notoriously short of an actual event. Uh, we're talking m atomic de decay the second it happens. The moment. I keep saying second. We're talking picoseconds at this point. Uh, the movement of light waves themselves. How, how different, uh, different mediums can affect light waves, meaning better better optics technology, better screens, better things like that. Basically, th this type of technology can help us understand, develop un unbelievable amounts of things. So with this jump technology, we can view phenomena that was previously unknowable. And as far as I know, this has been, I think this was September when they announced this. So and I think the original, t the teacup system, which is the original kind of, kind of system, was five or six years ago before this. So in five years, they've had a... It was roughly about a seven to ten times increase in the FPS. So, pretty cool. Fascinating wow. stuff. Wow. Mind-blowing. That is... That's light. We're watching light just... Chill. Yeah, and I think I saw somewhere, if they were to... Because we're talking trillions of frames here. If they were to... 
uh, play these frames at like 30 FPS, 24 FPS, which is kind of what movies are at, it would take literally millions of years to actually watch it. So hmm. we'd be playing at 24 frames and nothing would be happening because there's so many frames in that in that unbelievably tiny amount of time that it, it yeah. The codexing, it, the codexing program. Oh, oh so we're talking wow. out where yeah. the fuck we're talking screw like DaVinci peta, Resolve petabytes you, of data. Like oh, it is, you, and this is over not even a second. This is un un freaking leaveable. What 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 these guys have been able to to accomplish? You're just making yeah. up words now. I yeah, un yeah. Looking at like that graph, I I've, I've been trying to figure out what that graph even means. I know it means something. The one I know, on the bottom there. Yeah, the yeah. one on the bottom. Like I don't know what the y-axis is, but I do know that the white line, the cusp line, is better than the teacup line. So, uh, graphs mean science. So good job, good job, Caltech. <laughs> Keep it up. But I think uh, Charlie should uh, explain to us about some respect, beneficence, beneficence, mm -hmm. beneficence and justice and i'm what not talking about the bad guy from uh from the disney movie that would be maleficent mm. oh yeah. yeah for a second i was like which one are you talking about Mo yeah so okay. who can name this guy right here oh, i know that guy uh, that's uh freud Sigmund yes freud. Sigmund freud mm -hmm. um i'm gonna i'm actually not gonna keep him up there because he's kind of a creepy guy <laughs> you're just pain. looking over your shoulder yeah. Let me tell um, you about your sex life. Uh, yeah, and why it relates to your mom. <laughs> Everything does. Anyways, so uh, something that keeps on coming up in conversation about, or in the news, about why people aren't willing to take the vaccine. Uh, there's, there is a bunch of, you know, valid reasons. It was developed too fast. Okay, I get it. You don't want to be the guy, the first guy in line. That's fine. Never mind that we're administering over a million doses a day and people aren't dropping dead from the vaccine. Like, it's safe, right? But yep, one my of mom's the still arguments... Alive. Just, yeah. You know what? You're to alive. be fair, in 60 to 100 years, it might happen. Just like water. Oh, it's really killing us. Point. It just yep. takes 100 right. years for it to happen. I mean, oxidation is a real medical problem. I was actually about to say that. <laughs> Just a weird yeah. poison is all it is. Right? Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, one of the, the things that keeps on coming up is like the Tuskegee experiments or any of these unethical things that has ever happened in, in science, medicine, or psychology. Right? Mm. And um, something that you know people may not know is that there are universal ethical standards now. And this really came out of the 1970s after the Tuskegee experiments, after a whole bunch of really bad things. Okay. And the ethical standards, this generally guidelines are in, in reference to human test subjects, generally speaking for psychology, but healthcare has adopted these as ethical standards as well. So the, the, the ethical standards are what's called the Belmont report. The Belmont Report sets out three clear guidelines. Respect for persons, okay, and that basically uh, outlines a, uh, a guideline for informed consent. The participant in the study has to know what's being tested, why it's being tested, and has a choice to be involved. You're not just lining up random people from an orphanage, which we'll get there in a minute, yeah, it's that bad. And doing tests on them without their knowledge. Okay? That's unethical. So we don't do that anymore. We have to have informed consent. That also means we don't do tests on minors, which is important. Okay? The next one is beneficence. We have to have them Which basically... Digging. Right. Yeah. We, we do not want to perform an experiment that has a known lasting negative effect on the participant. So any negative effects that come out of the experiment have to be mitigated beforehand and when identified at that time. So, so just a, a quick 
sidebar. So if it's what if it's a positive effect? Is it the same concept or uh, or is no, that even? I'm just same. curious because the the positive effect is what we're hoping for. But if uh, okay. if you know you're doing this study and you get some information that maybe there's a chance that you create Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease that you stop the experiment to prevent further harm. Mm. So okay. there was a, uh, a entire vaccine trial back, uh, I believe it was back in June or July that was halted because three people out of a test group of a couple thousand developed this condition. And I, I don't remember the specifics of the condition, but they stopped the entire trial for that. That's because of beneficence. They don't want to cause lasting issues for science. Okay. The last thing is what's called justice. And justice, and this is something that used to happen a fuckload, okay? Which is more than a buttload, and a buttload is a unit of measurement. It's 128 gallons. You're welcome. Okay? Is that England? Like medieval uh, England? No, it's uh it's the um, it's the size of a barrel on the back of a boat. I thought it that a buttload. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Um justice means that we're not going to perform experiments on poor people to benefit rich people. So you're not going to use a group or a population that is particularly vulnerable, study the problem, find a great thing about the problem, and then use that information to benefit a different group hmm. and not provide the, so the benefits across the board. So it either has to benefit the 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 uh, group that's been experimented on. It actually has to be benefit has, or benefit all. It has to benefit all. It cannot okay. be used to benefit an isolated group. That would be injustice. Okay. So um, there are five real bad experiments, and I'm going to kind of go into them a little bit. Ten thousand foot view, not real huge detail. Okay. Um, the first experiment I'm going to tell you about is what's referred to as the Little Albert experiment. And they used a nine-month-old infant, okay, just a couple months older than my Madison. And they used a, an, a, uh, a stimulus very similar to, to um, the, the dog salivating at the sight of meat because of a sound of a bell. After a while, because the dog would always eat at the sound of the bell, when you remove the food and sound the bell, the dog still salivates, okay? Um, the Schrodinger's effect, right? Um, little Albert was conditioned... Pavlov. Pavlov, it's, sorry, Pavlov, yeah. thank you. Yeah, Pavlov, uh, <laughs> yeah, Schrodinger's different. That's, that's quantum states, sorry. Um, little Albert was conditioned... Every time he was seen or was shown this white fuzzy rat, anytime he would reach out and try to pet it, the experimenter would smash a metal hammer against a metal bar a couple inches behind his head to create this horrific sound and scare the child. Okay? Jesus. The conditioning continued. To the point that if he saw any white fuzziness, he would hysterically cry. Okay? Um, this is horrifically unethical for multiple reasons. But one of which is that it's not clear that the, the child's mother was really fully ever informed on what the experiment was. No attempt at deconditioning was ever made. And the information did not benefit anyone in that category and it, there was no justice associated yeah it sounds like it's just like let's see what happens we have no right. end goal of very this at crude all. Yeah. bullshit very just it, it's what? it's a bullshit roughly study. what time period is this uh 1920s 1930s okay so this is uh, where, like, the next one come from. is such a bad experiment they refer to it as the monster study Okay, they took twenty orphans, already already starting off on a great foot. Okay, twenty orphans, and they they told them that they would be participating in a speech therapy, 
and they split the group into two groups, and they identified that five kids in each group had early signs of a stutter. Five kids in each group had no signs of a stutter at all. And the, uh, the two groups were segregated and received speech therapy, but it was focused on negative and positive feedback. So 10 kids, five with a speech impediment and five without, were told that you don't have a speech impediment and that you should ignore anyone that ever says that you do and you should just live your life and have no problems. Very positive, very upbeat, okay? The other group received nothing but negative in, uh, feedback and says, yes, you do have a stutter and it's permanent and you should never talk, you should never speak unless you're certain that you will not stutter, okay? What's really horrible about this is that neither group actually improved on the presence of their stutter. So the five kids in each group that had a stutter did not get better, okay? First problem, it didn't benefit anybody, okay? Second problem, it, it really screwed up the kids in the negative feedback group. These kids had withdrawal issues, they were highly depressed, they had lasting social problems, okay? The group that received positive feedback, even the kids with the stutter that received positive feedback had no change in their stutter at all, okay? And there was no effort to debrief the people that were in the study, so they never knew that that had happened, like what, what experiment had happened and what the purpose was. They never gave, gave consent. The orphanage owner never acted in the best interest of the child to protect them from potential harm. And oh, it, it, it was horrific. Those 10 of those kids had lasting lifelong issues. That was in the 1930s, okay? Then there was the Milgram experiment, okay? And what the Milgram experiment was, my dog is scratching his neck. The Milgram experiment was three parties. So you had the experimenter who was wearing a lab coat, would stand in a room with the subject who was in the position of being a teacher. That teacher would sit next to a, a speaker box and a button. And a paid actor out of line of sight in another room was wearing a shock collar. And the experimenter would have the teacher, the, the actual subject of the experiment, okay, try to do word association with the paid actor on the other side of the speaker box. And that paid actor would in, like intentionally get answers wrong. And each time they got an answer wrong, they would receive an electric shock. What the subject didn't know, the person pushing the button, was that they were not telling the truth about reacting because they were not getting shocked, but they were acting like they were getting shocked. And it would increase in voltage. They would say, ow, that really hurt. I'm having chest pain. And at some point, the actor would stop responding. It wasn't until they received the maximum voltage, which was 450 volts, three times, did the experiment stop or that the subject said, I'm not willing to push the button anymore? 65% of the participants pushed the button to the max volts three times. All because they were told by the experimenter that there would be no lasting tissue damage. This study was supposed to establish empathy and figure out where, where authority and empathy kind of interact. And at what point would authority and morals really interact? Well, what's terrible about this study is they never debriefed the person. They did not obtain consent because if you told them what was happening, what the true experiment was, that would alter the outcome. And there was no effort to tell them that it was an experiment and that the people were not hurt. Some of the people in this experiment left thinking that they caused some sort of heart attack in that subject and killed them. That's a big weight to carry for the rest of your life, okay? The next one was a by, the bystander uh, effect, okay? Um, 
back in the early 1900s or early uh, 19th 20th century, excuse me. Um, there was this story of a woman being murdered in broad daylight with upwards of 30 um, witnesses, and no one intervened because everyone else assumed that someone else was going to do it. It's called the bystander effect. The way they studied the bystander effect was they gathered a bunch of college students with speaker boxes and under the guise of, well, we don't want you to be face-to-face -face because that brings up privacy issues. And they were talking about social stresses and all that stuff. One of the people on the speaker box would be fake or would express that I have a seizure disorder and then start making odd sounds and ask for help. And what they found was that the more people that were involved in a closed circuit conversation, that the le least, the, the less likely you were to stop the conversation, get up and try to find the other person and offer them help. So the more people involved in the experiment, the less likely you were to help, which is absolutely true. And I, as a first responder, I know all about the bystander effect. But the way they went through this was completely unethical because, again, informed consent changes the experiment. So they didn't want to do it. Okay, They never debriefed, and they never told the person that they didn't have a seizure and they didn't need help. So the, some of these people left thinking that they didn't help someone and they died. That was their thought. The final and worst experiment in the history of psychology is referred to as the Stanford Prison ex Experiment. They took 24 college students, white male college students, split them up into two groups of 12, 12 prison guards, 12 prison inmates. The experimenter, the head of the experiment, actually played the role of the warden, okay, the superintendent of the prison. And the experiment was supposed to last two weeks in a prison-style dormitory. The, the experiment actually only lasted six days, and several subjects had to leave the experiment early due to severe physical harm and severe mental anguish. But what happened was when you tell 12 people that you're in charge of keeping the peace, you're, you're the guards, and you tell 12 people that you're a criminal and you need to be kept in line, that people internalize those roles and horrific abuse at the hands of the guards was performed on the prisoners to the ends of having to sleep on concrete, being forced to strip naked, being beaten with wooden clubs, and there was lasting, long-term physical and psychological uh, uh, damage that never got addressed. The, the culmination of all this information says, we did some terrible things in the name of science in the past. But because of those terrible things, we, we instituted this ethical mandate that you must maintain this level of ethics. And that is the, the, where we currently are in science, psychology, medicine. The Tuskegee experiments, if, if you don't know what those are, you need to go look those up because that's a horrifically scary shit. Basically, they intentionally infected a group of African-American men and women with syphilis and never treated them and never told them they had it and just watched them degrade horrific things. That is one of the biggest reason why the African American population in the United States, by and large, in large proportions, is refusing to get the vaccination, even when offered. Even when you're like skipped in line, say, all right, you, I know you're not really due for this for, for months, but do you want the vaccine? They're like, hell no. It's because of stuff like this. Mm. So we need to, like, not by any means sweep this under the rug. We need to embrace our history and understand what went wrong and embrace the changes we've made in ethics and the standards. And any time we find an organization, a, a company, or a person wildly abusing these ethical guidelines, we need to punish them severely. Yeah, no, I, I 
Yeah, I agree. So, uh, sorry to bring down the mood. Well, actually, I just had a quick follow-up question. Yeah. Because, and play devil advocate here. I, yeah, I agree with you entirely. So, with social experiments, like, can, can information, not that, all these, a lot of those experiments didn't really find, you didn't find anything at all. Obviously the first two were just horrific and just cruel. The last three, as terrible as they are, they're not as, to me, they're not as bad. As they're, they're horrible. I guess. They're, they're horrible, but information was found from it. The problem is, is they trying weren't. To, like yeah, it's, for me, it's, there, there was lasting effects. It's it's yeah. like the informed consent to me like if in a social experiment I don't know if you can do an experiment with with that as you said it, it changes yeah. the results it does change the outcome but, but the last two it's of the risk of debriefing benefit. right and but it seems like the debriefing and follow ups afterwards are the most important part not and as you said like certain there are certain levels of terribleness definitely uh, i don't know it's 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 probably it's a very i don't want to say difficult nuanced it's uh, nuance isn't even the word either it's 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 it is wrong what these people did like everyone it's morally wrong yeah so i guess it's up to scientists and which is probably why they've, they've come up with these rules to find a better way to do it because there's all there's always another way most of the time Right. I, 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 I think it's, I think there are like ways. Psych- it, well, I think there's ways to inform consent without tipping your hand. So, for instance, uh, in the medical field, there is a, a type of study called a double blind. And a yeah, double that's blind what I was say. means that um, there is a, an experimental medication that we think has a desired effect. We want to make sure that the subjective responses the, that our patients are giving are based on the actual effects of the drug and not the psychological effect of receiving what they think is a miracle cure. So group A receives the medication. Group B does not. It receives a placebo. Uh, if it's, even if it's an injectable, they receive an injection, but it's just not the medication. Okay, It's something else. It's something inert. And what makes it a double blind is that the person administering to the patient the medication and caring for the patient directly does not know whether they're getting the real drug or the placebo. This is not without, this is not without its own ethical issue. There's an actual, I have a huge ethical issue in this because. Yeah, like, sorry, like for me, I've always had an issue just in the sense of if, if a drug works, that means some people got better and other people didn't. Like, that is a, a right. violation of those yeah. rules, technically. It didn't benefit all. It's, but it, it eventually... So when you look at the, for instance, the vaccines for COVID, you have part of the groups of people... Actually, I think it was part of the initial groups getting the vaccine were actually people who got the placebo. Yeah. Yeah, and I can see from a risk versus reward, like, you can't... You have to be objective about it. Like, you can't... uh, I See, the ethical dilemma for me... No, you're fine. The the ethical dilemma I have with double-blind studies is that Let's go with the most horrible thing I can think of. Childhood cancer. You've got a child that is receiving experimental treatment. You've got a child who is getting the placebo. That's that's a fucking problem because in order to be involved in these studies, they have to make the conscious decision to go off of all other treatments or that everyone in the the two groups are receiving the same other treatments, whether it's chemo or radiation or whatever. So maybe you can clarify something with me with double blind. So obviously both sides are unaware is are both sides oh well i know obviously the people administering are aware they might not be getting like giving anything of any real value 
but does the patient is the patient aware that they're getting an injection and it might not be yes might not do they, anything. so they completely understand that they may or may not be getting the medication um okay. i'll go personal okay. that's something this. i've my, never so my mom has ms like me and she was actually involved in a double blind study in the early 90s for a medication called beta seron it, it is technically interferon beta 1b which was an experimental medication it was like number four or five total for medications to treat ms okay she was in the double blind we were reasonably certain that she was actually receiving the medication because she was consistently getting better when the double blind study was over she got to go on beta seron for sure and we didn't see any change in her stabilization so we were pretty certain that she got the medication if not it had a fantastic placebo effect for about six years before she had to migrate to another medication. Um, the problem I have is if there is lasting damage done by receiving a placebo up until death because you're foregoing other treatments to be a control for this experiment, how are we compensating you? Where is the beneficence? Where is and that's, the justice? That's the key, and that's assuming there's a positive effect. I mean, if right. there's a negative effect, then is there follow-up? Is there... Right. I, I guess that... Now, I, guess... I don't... I can't so say anything that isn't with, a gray area. And... Right. Yeah, with, specifically you... with double-blind studies, there is a contract that's signed. As long as you participate and fully participate in the study, at the end, if the medication is approved... You'll get it for free for X amount of time or at a, at agreed upon rate. Or if there is any lasting negative effects from the study, though the, re the related medical costs and co complications will be covered at no cost, typically. I mean, I, I guess there's so not if you grow a third arm, to do it. If you grow a third arm, we'll take care of it. That's basically what they're saying. We'll train it to be stronger and better. Yeah. Faster makes it better. Uh, d d I, I guess no. you're not no. Daft Punk. I know. Sorry, but I have how? Uh, it's a gray area. How would you suggest that we create a vaccine or something like that without a double-blind study, then, without <sighs> knowing the to know the effectiveness? Uh, unfortunately, what I think it'll take is a jump in. Um, more or less quantum physics the ability to a deeper understanding of genes I'd say, i too. i need a tricorder i need to watch without being invasive i need to watch how your body responds to the medication on a nuclear level and be able to remotely observe that because that will that will give me all the data i need of whether it's having the desired effect or any side effects and I don't need a placebo group to tell me that. That's, yeah, you don't need to it, see it on a large scale. We need to advance medicine another 30 to 50 years, I hope. I hope that before I'm done being a paramedic, that I have a medical tricord. That's that's all I want. I don't want a lot. I don't want flying ambulances. <laughs> I don't like. I want to be. I don't want to be in a helicopter. Those things crash a lot. I want a medical tricord. Hmm. No. Here's hoping for that then. All right, Brandon. All you. Okay. Microsoft is developing an AI for Teams called Affective Spotlight that will look for expressive individuals in webcast and presentation, then show those individuals to the presenter. For those of you who don't know, affect in psychology refers to the underlying experience of feeling, emotion, or mood. Thanks, Wikipedia. Uh, the idea behind this is to give the presenter real-time feedback on how they're doing, which on the surface makes pretty good sense. If you don't, I don't know if any of you have had to give a presentation or talk during the last year, but it's pretty awkward without a, a live audience to base your talk on. Uh, being able to see how people are paying attention, are happy, sad, or laughing, if you're going too fast or too slow, it's all based on being able to see the people you're talking to. 
Uh, and for anyone who sat through a presentation lately, it's easy to see that the presenter isn't exactly comfortable with the situation. Um, Microsoft plans on having this AI be an invisible member of the call, and it will send back audience video streams to the Azure backend. Uh, their features will be extracted from the frames of the call, uh, facial landmarks, facial expressions, and head gestures. Uh, from there, a spotlight score will be computed, and the spotlighted audience video stream will be shared to the presenter. Again, on the surface, this seems fine. But we know Microsoft has a habit of using our data in Teams and its other Office products to get a sense of how productive we are, and then report that back. Uh, there was that whole controversy with the productivity score just a few weeks back that Microsoft has backpedaled on a bit after that, but those scores are still available to administrators. So my worry is that these affects will be passed on to our Office profile with a rating of how engaged we are during meetings. I know I'm not the only one who's been on a meeting wondering why the heck am I in on this one and has gone on to working on other things uh, with the meeting playing out almost like a podcast in the background. Uh, would that AI see my concentration and think, ooh, let's spotlight him, or would it instead count me as not paying attention? Would Mr. This Veda, into the... eyes forward. Yeah, exactly. And would this feed into that supposedly invisible productivity score? We may not know for a while yet, but it's definitely something I'm going to be thinking about in my next meeting. Uh, no, I don't like that. <laughs> I mean, no. Like, in terms of, like, productivity score, I've only dealt with it a little bit through, like, the email side in terms of responding to emails and who is your, your number one uh respondent and who you talk with the most i've never liked that for that very yeah. reason like as a well, worker you're not you're signed a damn wait, contract you're here to I, yeah no nope, nope 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 i haven't seen the the productivity score you've never seen that really no. yeah, okay it's, do you guys use yeah at your work do you use office 365 no we use uh office 2019 Oh. Okay, that's why it's okay. it's all the 365 features, and yeah. So like, I got an email Monday saying, uh, you know, your top collaborators, and you know, this is, and then it went in to say how much of their email I read, and I don't like that because I I speed read, like I don't I don't look word by word. I kind of look at a sentence and How like just it just that? fits Your together. Cam or something? Or... I, I don't know. Magic. Because according to it, I only read 50% of the my boss's emails, but I respond to him in, I think my average was like five or seven minutes. And then my, my new coworker who I've been training. It says I only read 11% of her emails <laughs> and I take five hours to respond, which I don't. It's just I don't respond to her emails in email because usually it's it's yeah, uh, like a yeah, this, question this, yeah, this is on a, and I just go over and I'm like, hey, this is the answer. Yeah, this, this is yeah, on a small scale. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. I keep interrupting. This, yeah, it's technology removing nuance. It's technology trying to treat us like robotic machines and, and that mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's this per th this like steamroll toward that toward just society and mostly technology going how can we have people act more efficient and what efficient means in that circumstance is more Cheaper. robotic like Let's yeah. let's take all of the little things out of life that actually make the biggest difference and flatten those and then only add like let's take a bunch of this and make it binary like productive not productive. Yeah, it's yep. on a small scale I don't see this as any real threat because the small businesses they could probably look over the uh, the other side of the office and be like, "Hey, get to work." Yeah. But right. on a corporate level with thousands of employees oh, 
a 5% increase in productivity can mean millions of fucking oh, dollars. Oh, yeah, I could see and this. And that is... Yep. Oh, yeah, that is that is some um, 1984 next... Yeah. This... Yeah, well, no. In no, the no, hands no. of my HR director <laughs> would be... Whoa. Careful. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anybody it, who... It's... If you have a particular nefarious boss... This, hates this guy, too. He's universally yeah. hated by everyone. Still. Yeah, if, if they predict... It, yeah. It's another way for a person, for a boss, for a company to say... To find a reason to fire you. Even if you're a good employee... Like I'm assuming Brandon is. I mean, he could be lying for all we know. But yeah, I, I mean, I fire. All Brandon. they have it. If all they have is the, if a <laughs> if a cold, fire. heartless HR director only sees he's fifty percent efficient, and takes hours to respond to his colleagues, that the data is all you'd need. And in a court of law, you could probably yeah. make that case. Unfortunately. Yep. Well, and Colorado being Colorado, you don't have to give a reason. Yep. It, you're at will hire. Yo, yeah. You're at will employment, so at any point they could just be like, you know what, Vader, we don't we don't need you anymore. You know, yeah, they've got ninety life. days before you are outside of a probational period, and then they have to give a cursory reason why the f- firing was justified in order to not pay unemployment insurance. But yep. they can they they can terminate you regardless. It's just a matter of whether they will pay for your unemployment or not. The work death yeah. cult people. It's a problem. Just, no, just see, the so metric that. that I hate the most, because at least I could point at, you know, if somebody was like, hey, you take seven hours to respond. Oh, really? No, look, here's the team's chat log, because I'd prefer to, like, call her in teams because Which it's funny. easier than typing. You'd think they, would, they could take that data and be like, oh, okay. You'd think. They're using it with other office products. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or I go knock on her door and be like, hey, you're looking for this file? This is where it's located. Because it's, you're not it's easier. You're interpersonal contacts. That's, that's well, not how we the talk through the door. Of the Get in your, I have my mask on. No, no, Get in your cubicle it's not, it's and not die. A, you know, a COVID Folding thing. your beard up it's, does not count as a mask. <laughs> that's a very porous it mask. That just makes you look like Kilroy. And mouth. <laughs> I mean glorious mm-hmm. but but no i don't know the, the robotic workforce of the future does not have this you respond yeah. through the same media which you get the message and you respond in x amount of time you it takes you x amount of time to read and you look yeah. entertained when you're in meetings or else yeah, it's, yep. set on that fire. is a whole episode well, we could do on capitalism as well but Maybe we will one day. Oh, I'm just yeah. very fortunate. We do have our we... special episode coming next week. Yeah, this is true. Uh, <laughs> I am very fortunate that we do use Office 365, but our organization doesn't function on the same. You know, we, we don't yeah. measure our productivity based on email. We measure it based on how many patients we transport in a day. That's, right. Yeah. That's yeah. Completely... Well, and that's like in in my because I am a local basically help desk like we our performance is measured on how quickly we take care of tickets assigned to us right and and then you know if people fill out the surveys at the end of those tickets which i think is just hilarious but if people take the time to fill out the survey at the end of the ticket like that's also added in like you could a us locally like, like nobody is worried about so, our emails or how full our calendar is because that's the, the other tool. metric that i just hate is the time to focus because it basically just looks at your calendar and says these this is the amount of or this is the percentage of time you already have allocated to other stuff and then this is the amount of time you have left available to focus and i just I hate it when, like, if I have a really meeting-heavy week or I have a really, like, I'm working on a bunch of projects, it tells me to block off time so that I can focus. But then on other days where I don't have enough stuff scheduled, it I can't remember what it says, but it says something about, like, you should find 
basically find more to work on. Find and busy it's like, work. are you freaking serious? Yeah. Okay. And it's like, it wants you to have, like, this perfect ratio of, like meetings and projects See, and like stuff scheduled stuff like this it just teaches people to game the system it doesn't teach oh, yeah. people that uh, so actually this is why my boss does not do um he he told us this story that he worked at a place where he was a network admin and he worked with a bunch of help desk people and it was uh some sort of corporate place and the help desk people were you know basically rated by how fast they would get tickets out so they would immediately try to close tickets they would like rush through to get those tickets closed no matter what no matter you know what the issue was and and it just taught them to close tickets even if people came back and reopened and like opened a new ticket it still counted as that so so instead of solving problems it was just about gaming the system because there's no there's not a good way of saying, you know, is this system actually a problem? And, and I, okay, as a side point, you know, because I never rant, but this like surveys, <laughs> surveys never. are all screwed. So I recently got a survey requirement in my email and it had like, I forget what company it was for, but it had like one to seven or one to six was red, orange, was seven to nine and green was 10. And it's like, why have that many numbers if you're going to consider more than 50% of it bad? And that's what, you know, somebody to told me at like Safeway. It was like, uh, because I would give it, it's like, you know what? In order to get like five stars from me, like it, for going to Safeway or something, I need somebody giving me a massage at checkout or what, you, you know, it, it has to be absolutely like 100% elegant of my dreams. Basically, you can't hit that. That is almost impossible. And but that's what these people are rated on is you have to hit that. And that's a problem because that teaches people to be dishonest and game the system. It's you can't take humanity and put it into ones and zeros. But they're going to try, Cody, because there's money try. to be made. And unfortunately, that's kind of where it's going. I mean, mm -hmm. whether it's right or wrong, that's where it's going. And that's probably one of the... We, we have been generally doing a lot more positive aspects of technology and science in the last few episodes, actually. I'm very proud of us and for being positive. And it's time to bring it down. <laughs> but there's always that other side of not positive. And this is probably, yeah, this is definitely a a dystopian yep. future. Until the Possibly high we're in it. We're living it BMP, right now. High altitude yeah. nuclear explosion. So that, that, Fire yeah, I think cell. that might be an interesting... Uh, discussion episode. You want Skynet? Because this is how you talk get about Skynet. that one of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. Uh... Well, guys, it's been a okay. positive episode. Well, yeah, we were yeah, sort of it? happy until it just kind of. Sorry, guys. Sorry. That's ah, okay. We need the, the bad is important too. It's good to know. Yes. But actually, Charlie, yours was positive, even though you said a lot of bad stuff. Like, oh, the end oh. result is I mean, there's yeah, positive I mean, in it. There's a reason why the, we have rules, and I explained why we have rules, and what happens when we don't have rules. <coughs> Capitalism. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Discussion. I'm going to go ahead and leave that right where it's at. No rant. No, no rant. No rant. No rant. No rant. No rant. We don't have time Next for time. rants. You're silencing me. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am postponing you. <laughs> There is a time Tabling you. Don't put me All righty, guys. Colton, where can we find you? Well, I am Colton Roper, also known as Seeker4761. I stream on Twitch. I also have a YouTube channel. I also do Facebook gaming and all that fun stuff. What is your silly thing to say again there, 
Cody, what I were you going to say? I was pointing at him because I thought it was his turn to uh, say something silly. My bad. But I was going to say. It's already been said that, this episode. That's how, that's how many rants or how long I wanted to take to rant when he said the things that he said. That, that, that many so seconds. <laughs> Hours. Pico seconds. I'm also a contributor to the techpirate.net. Um, on my YouTube channel, I've been pretty consistent with my Game Review Thursday. I have one coming out, uh, I guess, this coming Thursday for Ultimate Zombie Defense. So check it out if you guys would be interested. Anybody. Who knows? If that would be the number of seconds you are ranting, that would be 80 minutes. That's a lot. I could see Even that happening. You. You know, I, could I could see, could see that That's happening. why I said seconds. It's, ha- it's happened before. Not here. Yes, it has. Not here. I think. I think... Something like that happened before he turned into the sock ninja at one particular party. Oh, God. <laughs> Cody, where can we find you not ranting on the internet? Apparently being a sock ninja at some random party. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find me on the YouTubes at Striving to Fail. Uh, you can also find me on Steam as Psycho Nitrous playing... Valheim, which is um, the great new Norse game out. And uh, yeah, really, that's where you can find me lately. And on here as well. What about you, Mjolnir? You can find me as the funniest member of Dark Horizon. Uh, oh, strong. Mildor. Mildor on Steam, <laughs> Discord. Uh, not Facebook, Twitch, YouTube. Uh, I am going to be a contributor to the Tech Pirate at some fucking point. No guarantee on when. And uh, yeah, you're going to see me twitching twitching a lot more. And not just because I've had caffeine. <laughs> All right, Brandon. Your turn. <laughs> I am Brandon Vader, also known as Dracanus or uh, Dracanus underscore Vader on Star Citizen. You can find me on uh, thetechpirate.net and also on YouTube as The Tech Pirate or Brandon Vader, where I was at one point posting motorcycle videos, and I need to start editing through those again as one day, hopefully, the uh, sunshine and nice weather will come back and I can hop back on the uh, motorcycle. Heck but, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Also, I wanted to just show uh, <laughs> a clear piece of glass yes totally clear Cloak uh, engaged yeah. my son made us this cool little uh bead art that says twill and has the little boxes and colors yeah. and... you're gonna have to take so a nice picture and our... give that to our uh our pro- well our editor yeah so we can put it up right here Anyways. yeah yeah so got our First little piece of fan mail, I guess, kind of. It didn't go through the it. mail. It, it was I count fan it. hand. Uh, that sounds Whoa. weird. Fan, fan crafts. How about that? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thank you all for joining us on this episode of This Week I'm Learning. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube at This Week I'm Learning. Uh, for you social media peeps, you can find us out there on Twitter at this twill. If you'd like to contact us, as always, you can send an email to twill at the techpirate.net. We shall see you all next week. Bye bye. cautiously read the outro seeing if i fucked with it i was i noticed that i read it twice
He's I read it twice he says it. as you guys were Microsoft doing your outro. Uh, what does Microsoft think about that, though? <laughs> you were deficient what? in reading the outro. Yeah, oh, how, how many no, I wasn't. You read it to... <laughs> That's three Microsoft points for you, against you. <sighs> Ten Damn points it, to I've only got door. six left. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're Ten removing five of your macros now. <laughs> You have to work we're, twice we're, as hard tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't launch Star Citizen. You don't have enough Microsoft uh, oh. <laughs> points to do that. So, Add the I have to say, to it, Linux. does anyone remember my Microsoft Bob? No. no. Okay, so Windows, I think it was 95, it might have been 98. There was this like optional add-in that made it look like you were in a house and you could go to like different rooms to do different functions. And I always thought that that would be like the coolest, like coolest thing to do with something like uh, Unreal Tournament. Like oh, if you wanted to launch another game, you would have to fight your way through bots to get to a different room to then launch another game. You know, with VR, or if you wanted they to could do totally work. do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just, just, I don't know. If you wanted to do work, Game you had to make a your life to a little Stan- bit. Stanton. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it might, it would I, make I don't know. Your commute like, a little more interesting. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. Ten-year-old me thought that that would be pretty, pretty ballin'. And then, like, thirteen-year-old me, when I finally built my own computer, was like, "This would be amazing to do." And then, nothing. And what? And hmm. Current Brandon, what does current Brandon think? Current Brandon thinks that that would be very wasteful of time and not very effective <laughs> at all. Yes, the Microsoft but it would be score. hilarious. 